Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon. Thank you, Madam President. Uh, I rise to comment on the resolution before us. Please proceed, sir. This is a, a huge vote, my most important uh, vote to date. Some would say that I have had a successful career in the private sector uh, as an engineer, uh, as an executive at a local water company. I had never run for public office before. As a first-time candidate, I ran on a pro-economic growth message, a pro-taxpayer message, a pro-liberty message. I ran as a family man, as a father, who wants to see his kids hopefully grow up to work and raise families right here in Connecticut. And my message resonated with the voters. And now that I'm here, I love this job. I tell folks all the time, it's great to be in the middle of all the action. I'm one of the new voices here in the Senate chamber. I want to see our state get healthy again. We can turn Connecticut around with the right ideas. I have been pushing for state workers' pension reform, state workers' overtime abuse reform, an enforceable state spending cap, a cap on state bonding, elimination of wasteful government spending. So I'll be voting no on this so-called concessions deal. You know, what I'm going to say is probably not very popular, but it's what I believe. I believe the state employee union leaders have a strong and unhealthy grip on some members of this legislature. I have a great respect for the rank and file state employee union workers. I have family members who are longtime state employee union workers. State employee union workers, the rank and file, they are hardworking state employees. And they provide important and in many areas vital services for Connecticut residents. But this deal that union leaders have cut with the governor is unaffordable. The concessions deal is deeply flawed and would do nothing for Connecticut residents who are not unionized state employees. The Senate needs to vote down this concessions deal and give our beloved state of Connecticut a fighting chance to change the status quo and go in a new direction by working towards getting our fiscal house in order ASAP. Senator, yes. excuse me, Senator Looney, why do you stand, sir? Yes, thank you, Madam President, for, uh, for a point of order. Please proceed, sir. Yes, thank you, Madam President. I would ask the chair to caution Senator Logan uh, that his comment earlier about certain uh, members of this General Assembly being in an unhealthy grip by state employee uh, union leadership, I think uh, goes beyond the pale of what's allowable comment in this chamber in terms of impugning the motives of members in their voting and impugning their independence. I would, would urge the chair to, uh, to caution Senator Logan on that remark uh, and to uh, uh, indicate that this chamber deplores those kind of remarks. Thank you, Senator Logan. At this point, um, I know that you're new here and uh, we welcome you here. Um, and, but it was, it's, it is not in common, um, uh, uh, it's common discussion to point anything out special like that. So I'd ask you not to do that again. Please proceed, sir. Yes, thank you, Madam President. And uh, 
you know, I am still uh, new to the chamber here and the rules, and I will definitely be more careful uh, moving forward with my uh, such comments. Thank you for pointing Thank that out, Senator. Senator Looney. So I don't like the fact that this concessions deal guarantees four years of no layoffs. I don't like that by year four of this concessions deal, that it guarantees salary hikes of more than 13%. I don't like the fact that this concession deal would tie our hands and make a significant portion of our expenses untouchable for 10 years. Think about that, 10 years out to 2027. That's a good way to run a business into the ground. And it's a good way to run this state into the ground. Yet that's what this deal does if it passes the Senate today. We need to understand and be clear about what will happen if this concessions deal gets approved and state government ties its hands for a decade. If this concession deal is approved, we will have more tax hikes, more local property tax hikes, devastating cuts to education funding throughout all of Connecticut, more draconian cuts to vital services for the disabled, the homeless, the addicted, such as those hooked on opioids. This concession deal, if approved, will have more draconian cuts to vital services related to vulnerable children and seniors, domestic violence victims. I ran for office, we all ran for office here in the Senate to prevent all of that from happening. The voters in the 17th district towns of Ansonia, Derby, Bethany, Beacon Falls, Naugatuck, Hamden, and Woodbridge sent me to Hartford to steer Connecticut in a new, more sustainable direction. We are already taxed to the max. Connecticut residents need relief, not heavier burdens. Now I am in a position, we here in the Senate are in a position to improve our state over the long term. We are in a position to block bad policies from becoming law. The numbers and facts show that this concessions deal is just a plain old bad deal. So I plan on voting no on this concessions deal, and I urge my fellow senators to do the same and vote no. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Thank you, Senator Logan. Senator Markley.